Anyway, it's a new year, so it's time for some new episodes. So let's talk about costumes and how to keep warm, since winter's coming. What the bloody heck was that? That's what you get for saying a cheesy line. Winter is not coming, it's actually already here. And it's almost gone again, I would say. But still as cold and as wet as ever. Now since it is so cold and so wet, well, there's not so not that many LARPs and not so many LARPers this time of year. Mainly because of the coldness, but also because of, yeah, you don't want to want to run around outside freezing all the whole day. Which makes sense, but it's actually it's quite a sh it's quite a shame because LARPing in the this time of year, especially in the winter where there's snow, it's really really fun, especially when there's snow. I mean, today we're not gonna talk so much about what you can do at a winter lab, but more how you can prepare yourself. Because you know, as the old saying goes, there ain't bad weather. There's only bad clothing. So, if your costume don't fit the weather, don't blame the weather. The weather ain't really an excuse for not go LARPing. Now with that in mind, let's look into winter costumes. Now when you're making winter costume, you want to look into something that's warm, waterproof, and needs to fit in with the rest of the costume. Now, fit in with the rest of the costume, and needs to fit with your character, and needs to fit with the setting you're in. If you're in a futuristic base, you can get away with using winter jackets, normal boots, gloves, stuff like that. Whereas if you're in an evil or fantasy LARP, you usually have to be more creative. So here we're going to focus more on the medieval and fantasy LARP settings. Now, if you're in a junior LARP, say from 12 and down, you can get away in with a little more, I would say you could get away with a little more, but that's also mainly because as a, as a child you, you shouldn't run around the forest six hours freezing. That's not really, it's not your responsibility, that's more the parents' responsibility to to that you are dry and having a good time. So there I can definitely see that you should use a winter jacket or a raincoat. Now, of course you can still integrate you, you could still, some tips on how you can integrate it is like put your costumes on top of it or make a towel bar, you know, the sheet with a hole in the middle. It's not a poncho, it's a towel bar. Or, I don't know, put a cape on top. Something doesn't need to be much, just an indicator of that you are an in-game character. And the only reason you're wearing your winter coat or your raincoat, well that's because it's wet outside or cold. However, if you're an adult or a teenager, it's an entirely different matter. When it comes to adults, um, you kind of adults, especially adults, you are a role model for the younger player. As teenagers, I would say maybe the parents maybe still have most of the money. So if you don't have the money for it, fair enough. But uh, then go get a job, or at least hide away your raincoat or winter jacket underneath your costume. That's the least amount of effort you can do. A lot of younger players are looking up to you. Um, I ha now I have some lab friends that are reenactors or they reenact as Vikings. So I asked them if they had some tips on how to make more yeah, re really good costumes for the weather, mainly because as a reenactor you have to work with the original, more natural-based materials because your costume needs to be more, as, need to be as historical accurate as possible. Now, and they they gave me some tips on uh, what material to to use. Now, one of the things my guy, my friends recommended to me was, of course, wool. Now, wool is a wonderful material, material that's really good for hoods and capes. And pants. My my reenactor friends are using it as pants because the Vikings wore it as pants. Uh, and wool is waterproof. Well, it's not waterproof, but it, because it has all, has all these small hairs, it sort of creates a shield against the rain. And it's nice and warm, and you can, yeah, it. Wool is just a fantastic material, and the 
more pure wool you're getting, the more you kind of get for your money. But wool is also very expensive, the more wool that's in the wool, <laughs> so to speak. You can get, if you get cheaper wool, that ain't, it's a wool and a mixture of something else. Uh, which is what I usually do. I don't have that big amount of money, but I still like to use wool in my costumes. Another thing is that wool, actually, you don't have to wash wool. Wool, you kind of uh, air dry. You can't wash wool, per se, and I sh should have told that to my mother. Moving on to the next one. The next one, they re next one my friends recommended was felt. Felt is again actually made, it's actually wool, and it's not something I would have used mainly because when you're working with felt, you're working with water and heat, so I would say, well, if you're walking outside in the rain, wouldn't it fall apart, but apparently don't. You, uh, it should be really good for hats, and it's easy to form if you have that, and something, uh, felt is actually pretty fun to work with, so. I haven't done it, so I don't know how it works, but uh, try it and let me know how it turns out. Or if you have done it, then tell me how it works and how it turned out for you. The other two things are skin and leather and fur, and because I'm mentioning them so fast, because they're mainly the same thing, and then again, entire, not at all. Skin and leather, really nice for making something waterproof, especially skin. So maybe make a cape out of it first, a little warmer, because you of course have the fur. And skin and fur, well that's a must if you're playing an orc or a monster class, so... Really good thing for winter, and especially if you're also you're doing something medieval. Skin and fur, skin and fur. Only bad thing is, it's slightly expensive. And of course the fur is much warmer. Skin, not that much. It, and leather, now oh, that's just cold. It's really insanely cold. There's no heat, no warming in leather. It's be only if you're in the summer, I would say you can still keep quite warm in leather. Not that I've ever worn leather in summer. But last thing, of course, it was linen. Linen is kind of like uh, the go to material, and it's one of the best. One of my favorite material to work with when I'm making costumes, especially because there's so many qualities of linen, linen, and because of all the qualities, you can make so many different kind of costumes. Now, when it comes to winter costumes, linen is actually not that warm a thing to wear, not at least not one layer of it. But the thing is that linen dry, dries really quickly. At least that's my experience of linen. So I'd say maybe not for the warmth of it, but as as wearing it as some of the the layers underneath, it would it would be I would say it, linen is a really fine choice for that. Now that was mostly natural materials. Of course, when you're uh, that's of course if you have to use them, then you're working with those. But as a LARP, you can use pretty much anything you want, because we're doing it fantasy style. Yeah, we're, we, we can improvise, so to speak. So, we can use cotton and, let's say, make it waterproof. And then maybe waterproof your cotton, make a cotton cape and waterproof that. Put something underneath, for instance, like fletch or polar fleece. fleece. Not flesh, it's fleece. Polar flesh, flea, polar fleece, which is a sort of an artificial material. It works kind of in the same way as wool, and it's a really good alternative to wool. It's a lot so it's a lot more soft. It's warm. It's something. Um, it's not exactly. It doesn't have the same water resistance, but it is kind of. Um, if, if it doesn't rain, if you're just out in the snow, it will still keep you dry on the inside if you're not lay, planning on just using hours and hours of laying or sitting on top of snow pile. 
But uh, the thing is, if you are allergic to wool, I'd say use polar flesh. The really big minus for polar flesh is, of course, it's artificial. So when you sort of, in this case, it be it becomes electrical when you take it off. Uh, it becomes uh, it creates static electricity. That's one of the mo really minor minuses. The really minor, the really major one is that it's not windproof. Wind goes straight through it. Then there is uh, silk, of course. And silk, yeah, of course, it's also a natural material. But silk is very, uh, that's not warm. Silk is insanely cold. Especially if you only wear silk. But why am I mentioning silk? I'm mentioning silk because you need something to transfer s sweat from the body and out. And that's something silk is really good at. So I would say silk for the under garnets, maybe, well, if you go that far, or at least have silk of something maybe on underneath, because then it you get you need to get the wetness away from your body, otherwise you kind of it, then you'll get cold on the inside, and if, if you get cold because of yours because if you're sweating and if you can't get the sweat out, you get cold sweat, and then you freeze anyway, no matter how many layers and how much warm stuff you're wearing. That's why natural materials are, natural material materials is a really good thing to work with. And so why stuff like artificial material like that may that's mainly made out of uh, something PVC like isn't really good. Um, you're, I got the advice that if you're walking if you're going out and you only uh, only can afford artificial material then check if the artificial material how it feels does it feel fake if it feels fake then that would not be something that you would use for a winter costume otherwise you could probably use you could probably use it depending on how thick it is I mean something like satin there's a really thin material maybe not so much now that we looked into materials and we looked into setting and all that let uh, let me Let's go into making a costume and let me show you how I usually do it for a winter larp or a cold day, just just or a cold day, so to speak. Underneath it all, I have something to transfer sweat and to keep me cold, so I have my undergarments. And no, I do not have any game undergarments. If you do, then please. Uh, no, I don't want to see you under game in game undergarments. So you keep it for. I don't, I don't, okay. Anyway, I have my uh, skiing underwear or long johns or whatever. <laughs> I, I don't. They're not long johns, but the thing. Yeah, use. You have it underneath when you're skiing. They transfer sweat really well, and they keep you warm. And uh, nobody's gonna. See, it might not fit into your setting, but nobody's gonna see that far into the costume. And if they do, then maybe it's some different kind of roleplay you're doing. Anyway, we have this. I have this on, and then uh, on top of that, it's airs and layers. Airs and layers of clothes that's gonna kind of isolate you away from the cold, or the winter, the winter cold. I have my shirt that's made out of linen. It transfers against sweat. It gets really dry. Uh, it dries really easily. And on top of that, I have my uh, woolen cape. I in summer use as a pillow and in winter I use it as a, use it as a cape and in rain days I use it as a, as a raincoat so uh, that's really my uh, utility too now the cape's not very long and that's mainly because somebody washed it and it's not supposed to be washed so it's shrinked however because it was washed it became a little more dense uh, it became a little more dense and therefore could reflect water a lot better since I didn't use the best quality of wool so that just made it a better raincoat or rain cloak ah. <clears throat> anyway you want to concentrate on this the upper part of the torso when you're making the costume because this is really why you want to keep warm you want the torso to be warm the heat, uh, I mean the legs and the arms, they're gonna take care of themselves. And of course also 
the head somehow you're gonna have some kind of a thing over there I had a hood on and I do have a woolen hood but it's all down in the basement so I took my uh, cotton hood here which is not as warm and it's uh, not, not very thick but still it creates an isolation around your head so you're not losing all uh, the heat uh, you're not losing all the heat and at the same time it also works as a wind stopper for a cold winter wind the most ideal thing I would say would be a woolen hood or a leather hat or something like that because it's really especially leather hats keeps the heat in so to speak and keeps the wa water out and with woolen hoods they're just fantastic I can't I can't say more than that uh, pants well I used to, for this here I took on my woolen pants again and these pants here are also somebody something that shrinked but cut them up and redid them so I could fit them again that's why they have polar flesh in the side so with the stripes with the black stripe now I, I that's the only pair of woolen pants I have otherwise I usually wear use linen for this woolen pants in winter really nice then what more yes of course, of course, uh, the boots, the boots, the boots, the boots, the boots are some of the most important things, or the shoes. Um, well, usually, you when you go to a lot, if you have medieval and in-game shoes, then that's a really big thumbs up for me, because a lot of people don't, and it really look. There's nothing more silly than having a most awesome costume that then come in your pink sneakers, but. But uh, in a winter library, I don't really mind if uh, you can usually get some kind, you can use your winter boots and sort of integrate them into the costume. A lot of winter boots look like they uh, fit into the costume. My in-game medieval shoes, which are made out of one layer of leather, it's in, are insanely cold in winter and gets easily wet when it's uh, raining. So in winter time if I'm using them I usually have an extra pair of socks with me uh, and I'm at least wearing woolen socks maybe two layers um, and if I'm not I'm not using them which I mainly don't when it's winter time and it's insanely cold then I use my uh, other boots here which are much much more warmer and oh nice just a nice winter I, and I can only record the, these guys I would say they could easily go for an in-game boot they don't uh, of course it's easy to see that they are not made out of leather not made out of the right material but they don't scream out of character thing out of the uh, out of worldly thing if uh, if you can't go out and make something if you don't have the money for a boot like this, you don't have boots like this or military leather boots, military boots, just have these pink sneakers that really, really keeps you nice and dry and warm in winter and in rainy days. Then I recommend a cheat boot, so to speak. Modifying shoes with pieces so they look like boots and then afterwards when they're done they can take the pieces off and it's still in nice shoes. And I'm gonna say, that looks freaking awesome. It's a really cool idea. Um, and it's it's sort of like when you have the teapot and you just put the hood on top of it to hide it. And the same thing you do with the shoes. You have a sh shoe hider, so to speak. And you don't need to make it out of leather. You can make it out of cloth. Anything, you could wrap it around it so it looks like you have yeah, wrapped feet. Although I've, got to, I've seen people use socks uh, on top of shoes, which I've got to say, not the biggest fan. It looks a bit silly, but hey, if you don't have anything else and you have a pair of socks you're willing to offer, by all means do so. What else? We have the socks, blah, 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 blah. Oh yes, the gloves, the gloves. Now I usually don't wear gloves. 
but uh, gloves is a really good thing to have, especially when you're doing a lap. And gloves are an easy thing to get because leather gloves you can buy them at the store. You can make your own, or if you have those uh, cloth leather gloves, you can sort of cut the fingers off and make the hobo glove, and then just work with that. And that's that's a really easy way of keeping your hands warm, so you still use them for I don't know the writing or fighting, because you're gonna be out in the forest all day or outside for at least five to six hours maybe. So you want your hands to keep warm. What was else? Or what it held? Was it else? I was thinking. Oh yeah, scarf. One of the things that you're gonna remember is you want to keep your neck here. You want to keep that warm. So a scarf is a really good idea, or it's a really good idea to have with you around uh, around your neck area to keep your shoulders and neck warm. So. Here's the Finnish costume, or less, that's one of my finished winter costumes. What I, what I would consider wearing. Now, if you're interested in learning more about materials you could use or fabrics, then I, I just suggest you do a Google search on it. There's really tons of material out there, there's a lot of people, especially reenactors, that talk about this stuff. Or if you don't, want to do that you could also just go down to your local cloth, cloth store or clothing not clothing store but where you buy the, the materials the cloth and then ask them that's that's what I did and they gave me really good advice now other things you could do then uh, to the costume is add extra stuff like you could take a what's called a thermal flask and put hot cocoa in it and just cover the thermal flask up with, I don't know, leather or something and then could just sit out in the nice snow and yeah, have a cup of hot cocoa. Or you have to share with, a friend, with your friends or the other lovers, otherwise she just seems like a dick sitting there drinking hot cocoa while they're walking around freezing. Now with all this in mind, well, there really shouldn't be an excuse for you not to go LARPing, so go out there and LARP now! So, before I say bye-bye, I, I want to give a heads up. Now, on the 16th since February, you're gonna go over to... You need to go over to LARPing.org's channel. And uh, because there, me and Casa from LARP Girl Ivan from Crow Arbor and Caroline from what's it called? Eras Chronicles are gonna have a Google, uh, are gonna have a live streaming a, a, via Google Hangouts. So uh, go check that out. That's gonna be uh, that's gonna be fun. It's from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, Eastern Amer standard Eastern American time. That means that if you live in Europe, it's uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Central European time. So if you're living in Denmark, it's like six hours of difference. Which means that it's still for 12 midday, you need to log on 6 in the evening. So, right after dinner. In anyway, uh, if you are still a bit confused, then uh, I'm gonna throw out a treat, tweet before we log on and on course of, an, of my on Twitter, Tumblr, on my Facebook, all that lovely places. In the meantime, go check out Lara Girl, go check out Crow Larber, um, and check out larping.org. It's a really cool website with a lot of cool bloggers. So, hope to see you next time.